right. How's everybody doing today? Woo! Woo we have comic book fans in here at all? No. Or is it just me and Winston and we're just like forcing you guys into this? <laughs> all right. So if you guys don't know me very well, there have been two things that have stuck with me that I've loved since childhood into adulthood, and that is comics, and that is, well, okay, so I like Dragon Ball Z too, but baseball was where I was going. I was going to try to keep it a little un as unnerdy as possible, but uh, yeah. So we've kind of gone through this series called The Last Avenger, and like uh, Caleb shared with us earlier, we've already done Spider-Man and we've done Thor. And today, we're going to talk about Iron Man. So if you guys don't know Iron Man very well, his alternate identity is uh, Tony Stark. And some uh, things that we need to know about Tony Stark is, some of his traits are that Tony Stark's a pretty brave guy. He, uh, he's kind of like the Batman deal, where he's a normal dude, he puts on this suit, and then he's able to fight giants and superhumans and, and all sorts of stuff, right? He's also a pretty intelligent guy because he has this suit that shoots missiles, allows him to fly at the speed of jets, and do all this other crazy stuff, and this thing fits in a briefcase, and when he lays it on the ground, sticks his foot in it, transformers onto him, right? So he's, <laughs> if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about, right? And the cool thing is, is like government agencies try really hard to replicate this suit, and no matter what they do, they can't do it. So obviously, Tony Stark's a pretty intelligent dude. Also in the Marvel Universe, he's one of those guys that people either love him or they hate him. People, there is really no in-between. He's one of those guys really quick-witted. Anytime somebody says something, he has something to say pretty much immediately. But the trait of Iron Man and Tony Stark that we're going to kind of go through today is that Tony Stark is unashamed. Tony, Shar Tony Stark sorry, <laughs> is bold. He's bold. He stands up for exactly what he believes in. We've seen that several times throughout the movies. If you read the comics, that's how he is. He's bold. He's unashamed. We're going to watch this video clip real quick and kind of get a little more insight on who he is. You've all received the official statement of what occurred at Stark Industries last night. There have been unconfirmed reports that a robotic prototype malfunctioned and caused damage to the arc reactor. Fortunately, a member of Tony Stark's personal... Iron Man, that's kind of catchy. It's got a nice ring to it. I mean, it's not technically accurate to see it's a gold titanium alloy, but it's kind of evocative of the imagery, anyway. Is your alibi? Okay. You were on your yacht. Yeah. We have port papers to put you in Avalon all night and sworn statements from 50 of your guests. See, I was thinking maybe we should say it was just, uh, just Pepper and me alone on the island. That's what happened. All right. Just read it word for word. Nothing about staying here. That's being handled. He's on vacation. Small aircraft have such a poor safety record. But what about the whole cover story? That it's a bodyguard? He's my body? I mean, is that, that's kind of flimsy, don't you think? This isn't my first rodeo, Mr. Stark. Just stick to the official statement, and soon this will all be behind you. You've got 90 seconds. Oh, Agent Coulson. I just wanted to say thank you very much for all of your help. That's what we do. You'll be hearing from us. From the Strategic Homeland and Just call us S.H.I.E.L.D. Right. Let's get this show on the road. You know, it's actually, it's not that bad. Even I don't think I'm Iron Man. You're not Iron Man. You're Am. Not. You're not. So, all right, shoot yourself. You know, if I were Iron Man, I'd have this girlfriend who knew my true identity. She'd be a wreck. She'd always be worrying that I was going to die. It's so proud the man I'd become, she'd be wildly conflicted, which would only make her more <clears throat> crazy about me. Tell me you never think about that night. What night? You know. Are you talking about the night that we danced and went up on the roof and and then you went downstairs to get me a drink and you left me there by myself. Is that the night you're talking about? Mm-hmm. thought so. Will that be all? Yes, Mr. Stark. that will be all, Miss Bronson. And now Mr. Stark has prepared a statement. He will not be taking any questions. Thank you. Uh, it's been a while since I was in front of you. I figure I'll stick to the cards this time. 
There's been speculation that I was involved in the events that occurred, the freeway and the rooftop. I'm sorry, several. Mr. Stark, but do you honestly expect us to believe that that was a bodyguard in a suit that conveniently appeared, despite the fact that I know that it's confusing. It is one thing to question the official story and another thing entirely to make wild accusations or insinuate that I'm uh, a superhero. I right? never said I mean, you're a superhero. Didn't? Mm -mm. Well, good, because that would be outlandish and uh, fantastic. I, I, I'm just not the, the hero type, clearly, with this uh, laundry list of character defects, all the mistakes I've made, largely public. Yeah. The truth is, I am Iron Man. All right. So there we see Tony Stark. If you haven't seen that movie, basically what happens is, is these two robotic dudes are flying through the streets and blowing stuff up, right? And everyone sees it, and the whole world's like, what is this? What is going on? So they pull Tony Stark aside. They said, follow these cards, read these cards, right? And the government agencies are telling him to do this. S.H.I.E.L.D.'s telling him to do this. All these people want him to say these specific things. But instead, Tony Stark confesses to the world who he is. I am Iron Man. He's unashamed of who he is. He believes that by telling the world who he is, that he can do some good, that he could save the world, right? So today, we're actually going to be in 1 Romans, and we're going to read this. It's like 1 Romans 1, 16. If we can get it on the screen, um, we'll read this together. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. So right there it says it. For I am not ashamed. So what does it mean to be ashamed? What does it mean? We'll pull up the definition of what the word ashamed means. It's ashamed, embarrassed or guilty of one's actions, characteristics, or associations. Reluctant to do something through fear of embarrassment or humiliation. That's the definition of what it means to be ashamed. I can share with you guys a story. My mom's here. She can, she can back this one up. Uh, I used to work at this place, I was 19 years old, and we made train windows. And if you guys don't know a lot about that kind of stuff, when you ship those kinds of things, you got to put them in a wooden box, so that way when it goes across the country, the glass and everything like that stays together, right? So we built them out of wooden boxes. There was this guy that worked there with us who shot himself in the hand with a nail gun. So for a year... All we did was ruthlessly make fun of this dude for shooting himself in the hand with a nail gun. We worked in the same department, and every time I'd walk past him, I would say, don't shoot yourself. And I would just keep walking, right? And this dude would always look at me. He, was all, it was, he would yell some sort of crazy stuff. I won't repeat, but, uh, but that was, so that was kind of how it was, okay? So we made fun of this guy. He was embarrassed. He felt ashamed of that kind of thing to happen. You never, ever wanted to shoot yourself in the hand with a nail gun at this job. So one day, I'm sitting there. I can remember this day like it was yesterday. I even remember the song that was playing on the radio. I'm sitting here slamming these, bo these boxes together, and all of a sudden, as I'm going, I feel a jolt in my hand. Well, I didn't turn my hand over right away because I was in denial, and I went ahead and finished this side. And as I turned my hand around, I noticed I shot myself in the hand with the nail gun. <laughs> So I don't say anything. I start trying to pull on it a little bit. Nothing's happening. It hurts. So I grab a pair of vice grips, which are these clamps, and I, I walk into the bathroom. I'm talking to people. I go, Jess, Jess. I'm like, hey, I'll be right back. Got to pee, dude. So I'm like walking. And I grab these vice grips. I clamp on to this nail. And as I'm pulling in the bathroom, my hand is twitching from the nerves. It's not coming out. I can't get it out. So finally, I have to go ahead and confess to the supervisor that I shot myself in the hand with a nail gun, I'm having to go to the hospital. So I walk up, I'm talking to this dude, and his name's Mark. Remember, like, I'm like, hey man, I gotta tell you something. He looks at me, he's like, what? I flip around, show him my hand, he just starts laughing, hysterically, <laughs> because I shot myself in the hand with a nail gun. So I get rushed to the hospital, and when you have something sticking out of your hand, people tend to look at you like you're an animal at the zoo. So I'm like sitting in this waiting room, and everybody's like walking by, looking like, oh look, he shot himself in the hand. And it's true. So 
I'm off work for a few days. I end up showing back up to work a few days later, ashamed, embarrassed, everybody yelling at me every day, ha-ha, oh, shot yourself in the head with a nail gun, you know, that kind of thing. I was ashamed. And I'm sure that all of us have a similar story of a time where we were confident in something, where we had something we were sure that we were the best at, and then when it was time to perform it or do whatever, we fell short. And we fall short, and we end up feeling that, that, that feeling of being ashamed. So what does it mean to be unashamed? So we have this definition, too. We'll show it up here. All right. Express or acting openly and without guilt or embarrassment. Expressed or acting openly without guilt or embarrassment. So let me ask you guys this. Are you unashamed of Christ? Are you unashamed to be open about who you are and what you believe? Are you unashamed when someone comes and talks to you about it to be open about that belief? So in Romans 1.16, we saw it again. It was Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Paul is not ashamed of the gospel. Is this what makes him unashamed? Is he unashamed because he surrounds himself with great people? Is he unashamed because he is constantly surrounded by the best light? And the answer to that question is not at all. Paul was constantly putting himself in rough situations. He was always preaching the gospel constantly. He was going around and sharing with people his belief, sharing with people his faith. And when you do things like that, it ended up stirring people up who would come out and try to shame Paul for who he was. I'm going to read something to you guys. This is from 2 Corinthians 11, 23 through 26. And this is Paul. Are they servants of Christ? I am out of my mind to talk like this. I am more. I have worked much harder been in prison more frequently, been flogged severely, and been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have constantly been on the move. I have been in danger from rivers. I've been in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from the Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false believers. Paul was unashamed to spread the word and let people know what he was about. But in 2 Corinthians, we see that Paul was constantly under attack. He was in attack in the country. He was in attack in the cities, from the sea, from Jews, from Gentiles. There was nowhere that Paul could go where there weren't people constantly coming out trying to make him feel ashamed for what he was doing, for what he believed. And, and here's the truth, too. Paul didn't hate those people. He didn't feel disdain for those people. Paul felt a debt to them. He felt obligated to share with them what he had found. And in Romans 1.14, we see this. We see him say, I am obligated both to Greeks and non-Greeks, both to the wise and the foolish. He was obligated to them. He felt obligated to seek the lost. And here's the truth. If you don't care for those who are lost, then you yourself are lost. And that's a harsh truth because if you do not care for the lost, you yourself are lost. That's a truth that I've had to hear before in my life, and it slapped me right in the face. It slapped me right in the face. If you want to be unashamed, if you want to seek the lost, if you want to share the word of God, then what you need to do is allow him into your life. And once he's allowed into your life, you have to allow him to change you. You have to allow him to change you. So after all this is done and the summer is over, and we've gone through all our CIYs, and we're done doing summer hangouts and home invasions, when you go back to school, how are you going to be unashamed? How are you going to seek the lost at school? Sawyer, you're going to be an upperclassman at Jeff. You know, how are you going to be unashamed when you go back? Derek, you're a wrestler, dude. You know, you do all this cool stuff. How are you going to be unashamed when you go back to Jeff? Xavier, my boy Shaggy, 
all you guys. When we go back to normal life, to Jeff, New Albany, Silver Creeks, some of you guys are going to college. Floyd Central, there you go. Some of you guys go to Louisville. A lot of our middle schoolers, if you're going from fifth grade going into sixth, you're going into a new world. How are you going to be unashamed? Where is your confidence going to come from in those moments? Iron Man, Tony Stark's confidence came from something that was stronger than himself. He wore a suit made of nickel titanium alloy, right? This suit deflected projectiles no matter what. It gave him confidence to fight giants. So where is your confidence going to come from? See, hopefully none of us ever have to face 40 lashes or be flogged or any of those kinds of things. But there will be moments in all of our lives where you're going to go and you are going to have people attempt to shame you for what you believe. They're going to attempt to shame you for sharing the gospel. So how do you overcome those feelings of shame? You have to ponder the power um, of the gospel that brings forgiveness to sinners and everlasting joy. Nothing in the world, nothing in the world, this is what's crazy, nothing can do this. No other religion has, uh, has solved the problem of separation from a holy God through, and offers salvation through hope and grace by faith and not works. Only this, only this can bring us all safely into the presence of God, and that's the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have an obligation to seek the lost, like we talked about. We are at debt to them. We have to seek the lost. Um, and I have, in the past year, had the privilege of getting to know a lot of you guys individually. And this right here is an incredible group of middle school and high school students. You guys can do amazing things. I had a, I, it was really cool because I got to go to both Mix and Move, and at both of those, every single student stood up when they got the call of who wants to be a kingdom worker. Everybody stood up and said, I want to make an impact on my community. I want to make an impact in my schools, in my neighborhoods. Every single student in here that went to those camps stood up. It was pretty cool. I read this quote the other day. It was from Tim Tebow. Tim Tebow's the man, but, <laughs> right? Uh, somebody asked him, or he said, I'm asked all the time, how are you not affected by the world? And his response, he said, is always the same. It's, how is the world not affected by me? How is the world not going to be affected by each and every one of you guys? You guys are game changers. You guys can do, you guys can do anything. You guys can make those waves in your communities. Make God a priority. Strive to be different. Be renegades. Christ died for each one of us, and Christ died for the rebels. So I'm going to pray. God, we just want to thank you for that sacrifice that was made for each and every one of us. God, we want to thank you for being with us in those times where we need to be bold. When we go into our schools and we go into our communities and we're, we have to act different. We have to be different to shine that light that is you. God, I just pray for each one of these students that they have that strength, they have that confidence that they know you, and that we allow you into our lives and, and to change us so that way we can each have an impact. God, we just love you so much, and everything you do show that. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen.